you look at the position of the eventual winner, they have been very close within shouting distance of the person who was leading going all the way back to 2013. Of course, Roy McIlroy in that new format in the strokes winner take all, he was five back in 2019. Now for more from Eastlake Golf Club in Atlanta, we say hello for the first time to our Todd Lewis. A relatively quiet Tuesday at East Lake. Most of the big names taking advantage of an extra day of rest. Let's not forget that the championship starts on Friday and concludes on Labor Day Monday. But a majority of the field will be out here on Wednesday to start preparations. As for the setup, well, not as challenging as we saw at the BMW Championship at Olympia Fields, but it will still be a, t a stern test here this week for the Tour Championship. The biggest challenge, the rough. It's not very high at two and a half inches, but the golf ball, when it lands in the rough, will sink to the bottom. It is very, very dense. The greens will also be a challenge. Some of the best putting surfaces that players will see on the PGA Tour this season, but it's a fast surface, running at 13 on the stamp meter. The tour average is at 11 and a half to 12. Now, more than just the tour championship could be decided here this week and the FedEx Cup. PGA Tour Player of the Year could be decided as well. Of the top five players in the FedEx Cup standings, all of those players have at least two PGA Tour victories this season. Colin Markawa, he's one of those players. One of those victories a PGA Championship. Justin Thomas, the only player with three PGA Tour victories this season. And let's not forget last year here at Eastlake, Roy McIlroy won the Tour Championship and ultimately the FedEx Cup. And that victory was probably the deciding factor in him edging out Brooks Kepka for PGA Tour Player of the Year. We'll see if those scenarios play out again here this week. Todd, thank you. Time now for Players on the Rise presented by Hyundai. Players on the rise, and they've been very consistent this year. Very few miscuts by all four of these players. Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, Justin Thomas, Colin Morikawa, all of them have at least two wins. Thomas out there with the three. Morikawa has that one and the only major that will be part of this conversation. So, Trip, you know, the Tour Championship has nine newbies, and this Player of the Year conversation Two of them have never been a part of it, so it feels fresh. It does. When you look at these four, if I turn over their baseball card <laughs> and you look at the bold type, yeah. what stands out for these guys? Consistency in different ways, though, completely different ways. I mean, Justin Thomas, of course, three wins. He, he leads the winning pack. So that usually is a, is a reason to be in the front running of this, and I certainly think Justin Thomas is. I mean, you combine that with nine top tens. I mean, he has been remarkably consistent time and time again. He has a second and a third, and one of those wins was the WGC recently. He's fallen off a little bit lately, so, you know, he got across the tape in Memphis, but he's kind of slowed down uh, at the PGA and going into the playoffs. He could turn that around this week. Certainly, uh, you know, he can, he can do it. He's within striking distance, and and I think there is an argument to be made for him right now. Then you go and you, you look at, at Colin Morikawa. Mm. Now, when you when you compare those two, Colin's got a big plus in his column because yeah. that major is usually worth a couple of wins, and that's what we see time and time again. And, of course, him winning the PGA. He won the workday. Uh, he lost in a playoff since the pandemic, since we've come back. He's been one of those players remarkably consistent, only had two weekends off so far in his professional career. Right. I mean, that right there should say enough. I mean, this guy is uh, world class in every way, and I think an argument certainly could be made for him. And now, since I'm making arguments for those four <laughs> players that you mentioned, John Rahm, I mean, right now he's got the momentum how he won last week. He won Jack's tournament. Um, he has, you know, climbed to number one in the world, got knocked off by the player I'm going to mention uh, next. But look, how he won that tournament last week, that, the, the, the ups and downs of that, making that 66-footer in the playoff <laughs> against DJ, remarkable. And I think, I think you know, he's got seven top tens, so it's not like he hasn't been consistent as well. Yep. But the hottest player mm -hmm. since the, the start of the golf and he has missed some cuts, and he had a couple of weeks where he did not look like Dustin Johnson, and, and I think we found out that was because the back was hurting. Mm -hmm. um, but you look at him, not near as many top tens, but he's 349 and two the last three tournaments he's played. Uh, he looks unbeatable right now. He starts at the top of the mountain at 10 under par. He's going to be very tough to catch. And I know we're talking about these four, 
And I think if any of these four win the FedEx Cup, I think they get the nod. I really do think it's that close. And I think that it is as close as I've seen it with this many players. And let's not, let's not forget about another player. We haven't mentioned Webb Simpson. I am, I'm with you. Two wins. If he, he starts, wins this. If he wins this, he could jump all he past could flip those the whole guys. thing. I think it's going to be one of those five guys, though. Okay. I really do think it's going to be one of those five. And it's really probably if none of those win, which I think would be unlikely based on the seasons they've had and how they're playing at this part of the season, uh, I think it would be unlikely for one of those five not to win. But if they didn't, it would be whoever played the best. And, okay. and I think I think this is as close as I've seen it with this many players playing some good golf right now. This is going to be a great tour championship. It sure is. So if I said to you, who's your favorite yeah. to get this done? And is there somebody who you think has slightly got their nose out in front? It is the Derby this weekend. I, I so. think it's Dustin Johnson just because okay. of what I said. And he plays this golf course well. I mean, this golf course suits him. I yep. mean, he really, you know, um, I, I just think that I, DJ has it all the momentum right now. If there is a fast-charging horse, it's certainly him. Uh, so I give a slight nod to DJ mm -hmm. to, to do it. And he starts at 10 under. He's going to be tough to catch. He's starting that far ahead. Oh, my gosh. And you consider he had the second in the PGA. Uh, he didn't lose. He got he got beat by yep, a kid who, exactly. who just did more down the stretch. Right. And also, obviously, what happened, he got the second in the playoff in a playoff event. All right. Well, there's a lot going on. On Monday, the PGA Tour announced changes to its fall schedule due to the circumstances related to COVID-19 and the pandemic. And as a result, in October, the Zozo Championship in Japan, where Tiger Woods secured PGA Tour win number 82. It's going to move to Sherwood Country Club in Thousand Oaks, California, and be temporarily renamed the Zozo Championship at Sherwood. For many years, of course, Tiger had his event there. So the Zozo Championship is now part of a makeshift West Coast swing in the fall that will include the Shriners Hospital for Children's Open at TPC Summerlin in Las Vegas to be played October 8th through the 11th. And then the CJ Cup at Nine Bridges will move from South Korea to Las Vegas the week after to be played at Shadow Creek Golf Course. So you take a look at this updated schedule, and if you consider the fact that after the U.S. Open, you would imagine a lot of the top players are gonna look for a little decompression, mm -hmm. but they have the final major of the year in the month of November. Trip. Yeah, no. Th th this is suddenly. Oh, this is going to be a very fall thing. appetizing. Yeah, I mean, well, you got like you said, you still got the Masters on the horizon. So, and and I think Shadow Creek is a wonderful golf course. I've had the uh, the prev the privilege of playing it. A of course, you times. have. And it is fab. I mean, it is great. We saw it at the match. I mean, we saw yep. it with Phil and Tiger. So, uh, it is going to it'll test the players in a lot of different ways. And it's a beautiful property, and it, it'll be nice to see that on TV. They've got to make these changes to accommodate, and that's what they did. And this was a, a well done job by the PGA Tour. You know, if you look back, the Zozo attracted a really good field. Of course, Tiger now. was in it and won it. Uh, he can Rory defend it, there. Sherwood. He can def Do you think that he will? Oh, he's played pretty well there in his tournament. When Got to get a start between the U.S. Open and the Masters, right? Well, I, he, I think we can guarantee there, and I think he's he's likely, if he's playing maybe any two. kind of golf, different. Yeah. Maybe, maybe Shadow Creek and Sherwood, possibly. possibly. Not unreasonable, right? No, not unreasonable, but 83 could happen at, at Sherwood. Okay.